Okay, today we're going to be talking about our next concept for plane stress, which is determining maxes and mins. And uh, so we're going to introduce this idea of Sorry, I spelled that principal stresses and max shear stresses. Okay. So a principal stress, so a principal stress. is um, the angle, so the principal stress is going to be the, 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 ro the rotated stress element where the max and min normal stresses occur. And the shear stresses are all zero. Okay, so if you start with some stress element where you have normal stress and shear stress, you want to find the rotated stress element, that angle theta, where all the shear stresses go to zero, and you're just left with normal stresses. Those normal stresses at that location are called the principal stresses. Okay. Okay. And so, again, I'm going to go ahead and just write some equations down to determine those principal stresses and those principal angles. And we're not going to worry too much about knowing where these der derivations, how these derivations work, because we're going to talk about all this again. We're going to repeat all this in the context of Moore's circle. Okay, so if um, you want to determine the principal angles, Okay, so the principal angles, right? You want to find the locations where the angles where d theta x1 or d sigma, sorry, d sigma x1, d theta are equal to zero. And if you just do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, you're going to end up with the, the tangent of 2 theta is equal to 2 tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y. So you can solve for theta, the theta values that make this, this work. And so there'll be, um, there'll be two values, there'll be two principal values that differ by 90 degrees. Okay? All right, so once you have the principal angles, you go ahead and plug them in to our equation, our transformation equations from the previous lecture to, de to determine the principal stresses. Okay, and so um, that's so. If you have the principal angles, you can determine the principal stresses from the angles just by plugging them into the equations. If you want to just know the principal stresses directly, without having to know any angles, then you can derive the following two equations: sigma one. That's the, going to be called the first principal stress. Is sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus square root of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 squared plus tau x y squared and then sigma 2 is just this term, but there's a minus sign. 
So it's exactly the same equation, but you replace the plus sign here with the minus sign. So sigma 1, the 1 means it has the, it's the larger stress, right? So this guy has to be larger. So sigma 1 is larger than sigma 2. That's why we give it the 1. Okay, so and notice these equations don't depend on theta, so you can determine sigma 1 and sigma 2 directly without any without knowing the principal angles. So that's one way to get sigma 1 and sigma 2. The other way to get sigma 1 and sigma 2 is to first solve for the principal angles and then just simply plug the principal angles into the transformation equations from last time and that will then give you sigma 1 and sigma 2. And you set sigma 1 equal to whatever the larger stress is that comes out of that substitution procedure. And again, if you, there are more details in my written notes, so I'd encourage you as you go through this lecture to look at my notes at the same time. Okay. A couple more equations. Again, don't worry about where these come from. We'll, we will get, we'll come back to that. If you have the principal stresses, and remember, the principal stresses are happening on a stress element that's rotated through a principal angle, and there's no shear stresses. Okay? But if you have the principal stresses, you can determine from the principal stresses where the maximum shear stresses will occur, what their values will be, and the angles at which they will occur. Okay? So if you want to know tau max, for example, you can get it directly from the principal stresses as sigma 1 or yeah sigma 1 minus sigma 2 over 2 and then tau min is nothing more than the negative of tau max okay and then theta max okay the angle where tau max occurs is just theta 1 the first principal angle minus 45 degrees and theta min is theta max plus or minus 90 degrees. Okay, so those are our important equations. Um, and uh, I, have a, I have a couple of examples in my notes. I would go through Go through examples in notes. So you want to go through the examples in the notes. Uh, I'm not going to do them here because it's just an exercise of plugging values into equations. Um, and again, this lecture is a little bit super superfluous because um, immediately on Friday we're going to we're going to introduce another concept called, Moore, called Moore's Circle that will motivate and give you intuition behind where all of these equations come from. And so uh, today I'm just introducing concepts. On Friday we'll go into this in greater detail.